Whatever that means. I have no idea what that means. Hey everyone, welcome. This is our Weekend in Review. Thanks for tuning in. We're happy to see you, happy to have you join us. So this past week, my sermon was, It's All About Jesus. It's all about Jesus. And of course, that's, that's what Christmas is all about. And uh, I think I was letting out a little bit of my passive-aggressive anger around the holidays because, because I'm like, you know what? Every time I see a wreath and someone calls it a holiday wreath, I'm like, no, no, no. It's a... It's a Christmas wreath. It's yes. a Christmas wreath. Or, or how about holiday cookies? Come on. Christmas cookies. They're Christmas cookies. Uh, you know, ultimately Christmas, the word comes from two words, Christ and Mass. So it's all about a church service around Jesus. Actually learned that on Sunday. Did not know that. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And uh, so it's uh, it kind of bugs me when Jesus gets taken out. We've got the form of a holiday, but we're losing the substance. But that's why it's so great to come together and come to Christmas Eve service. Um, you know, just take time as family and reflect upon the fact it's all about Jesus. And it's all about the fact that God sent his son to redeem you and me from our sin and our ways and ultimately to save us. Save us from ourselves, save us from our sin, save us from the devil, and and give us new life. Amen. I, I want to throw in there, I love that holiday was originally Holy Day. I love yes. that because it's, it's like a little bit of a jab and they're like, it's a holiday wreath or a holiday cookies like <laughs> still getting a little bit you know <laughs> it's a little jab it's a holy day it's a holy, it's a holy day. day the 1828 noah webster dictionary uh so this describes it as being a day to celebrate even a religious event so um the fact that people want to take that away too is unfortunate uh but that's why it's it's our responsibility as followers of jesus to spread the word that it, that it's about him I love this quote, uh, reminding us it's all about Jesus. World-renowned historian Jaroslav Pelikan puts it this way. It is from his birth that most of the human race dates its calendars. It is by his name that millions curse, and it is in his name that millions pray. That's good. So what is it about the name of Jesus that is so provocative? Um, ultimately, I think it's just the fact that he's God, and, and the enemy does wants to do whatever he can to fight God. Um, and so that's why we see martyrs being made to repent of the name of Jesus or die or be robbed of their family, whatever the case might be. Um, just kind of piggybacking off that, I love this um, quote here by C.S. Lewis. I won't say the whole thing here. You can definitely go back and watch our uh, watch Pastor Ryan's sermon and catch the whole thing. But he talks about Jesus, you know, uh, you can't just call him this great moral teacher. You know, he would either be a lunatic on a level with a man who says he's a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. And, and I, I don't know, I just love that. Like, if you if you look at it, who in their right mind would endure, to, and not even looking at Jesus, look at the disciples, who in their right mind would endure te uh, this horrible torture in the name of anyone unless they knew that, that his claims or their claims were absolute truth? That's right. You well, know, the yeah. disciples were martyred. I mean, that's right. Yeah, yep. they and they they went through their own uh, persecution in his name, um, for him. Right. And I thought that's yeah. a, a powerful thing. Who in the right mind would do that? And in John one one, um, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Um, moving down to verse fourteen, it says that the Word became flesh, and. If you go back to Genesis 1-1, there's even more backing up of this, that in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. So if the Word was God and the Word became flesh, that's just, a, for me, enough proof that that's God in the flesh, Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's full circle. <laughs> he is God. And, and Jesus said, and I think this is what C.S. Lewis was pointing to in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And wouldn't it be, you know, such a good trick of the devil to teach everyone that Jesus is one of the ways and one of the truths and one way to find life. And, you know, that's exactly what the ethic of our culture is today. Yep. Just find a path, and as long as you're sincere, that's all that matters. Well, I think it matters more than that. <laughs> because your path, you might be sincere and you might be a great person, but your destiny might still be hell. 
I mean, that sucks. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, God doesn't want anyone to perish. And, and, and he said, come to me. I am the way. And, and, and someone who says that, boy, they better back it up. Well, we know that Jesus backed it up. He backed it up with his blood and his life. And he laid down his very life so that we can be forgiven. Amen. Right on. Um, I looked as I was preaching even to the, uh, the fact that, you know, modern atheists and people who are just against Christianity in general, when they, when they view the Gospels and they look at Jesus' life, they, they openly admit Jesus was not the kind of person that came across as someone who would lie and, and given up what Mike said too, just as the disciples gave their life, Jesus gave his life for his own mission. Um, so he's not a liar and he's certainly not a lunatic. Uh, the human and and spiritual and uh, emotional wisdom that Jesus reflects in the Gospels shows that he is anything but a lunatic. So if he's not a lunatic and he's not a liar, well then maybe he's Lord. And, and that's exactly what um, Jesus asked his disciples one day. He asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, and Jesus even said at that time, Peter, you understood that because you were revealed, that was revealed to you by God. But you know, everyone who seeks sincerely about the claims of Jesus, I believe that you will come to a very similar conclusion. Either that or you will be at battle within yourself because Jesus is who he says he is. He is the Lord. So after that, um, I kind of delved in a little deeper into some titles that are given Jesus uh, in the Luke 2 history of the gospel. In Luke 2, 11, it says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And so there's three titles that um, are there, Savior, Christ, and Lord. So the first word we're going to look at is the word Christ. And what does Christ mean, Mike? So uh, when you say Jesus Christ, you're not actually saying his last name, quoting you specifically from your sermon here. Yeah. Um, but it's Jesus the Christ. So Christ was a title, and it's Greek for Messiah, which means the one who would be anointed. I joke that it's kind of like a football team waiting for the great quarterback who will lead them to victory like Kirk Cousins, and of course, everyone got a good chuckle out of that. <laughs> Although he's not a terrible quarterback, that's for sure. But even more so, uh, the people in the Old Testament were waiting for a deliverer. They were waiting for the one that God had been promising all of the Old Testament scriptures, that there's gonna be one who is going to be raised up, who will lead them to victory. And of course, Jesus uh, did not meet the expectations of the people during that time. They didn't understand that his kingdom wasn't what they were expecting. Yeah, it wasn't uh, based around going to war with the Romans. And, you know, it was a completely different type of war. And I love that uh, he came and just turned our ideas up, upside down as what we thought they were going to be, right? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Cool. Good. So Jesus, the Christ, and the second title we looked at is Lord. And uh, I'm going to put these pictures up, but... There's a monastery at, on Mount Sinai, which would be really awesome to go look at one day. Um, it's where Moses was uh, walking and uh, he saw a bush that was on fire but didn't burn up. And out of that bush came God's voice. Uh, so even though uh, it's a real monastery, here's a fake picture of Moses as played by Charlton Heston, which Love it. classic <laughs> movie, I mean, it's so good. Um, but even though it's a fake picture of Moses, it's a real history where God called a man to lead people out of Egypt. And, and God revealed himself to Moses because Moses said, hey, if I go to Pharaoh, the most powerful man in the land, and demand that all of his slaves be freed, I want some proof that I can give to the Israelites. And he said, tell me your name. And so God revealed his name to Moses, which is... I am. I am. I, I am. love that. Yeah. It's like sometimes you know, struggle with identity and that kind of thing. Like, who am I? What am I here for? That kind of thing. And God's just like, I am the I am. Like, I am the beginning. I am the end. Everything is around me. And God's the only one who can claim that and not have to be a proud statement. He is worthy 
of that title. And so out of that word comes the Hebrew word Yahweh. And the Israelites actually revered that word so much that they wouldn't actually speak it out. Um, they would actually use a term Adonai, which meant Lord. So when, when they were translating and writing, whenever they came to Yahweh, they would have to like completely clean their, like, clean their ink and everything like that and their whole bodies and everything. Like that's how like important and powerful that word was. Um, yeah, I'd, like, I'd so, forgotten. so That's to awesome. have that label of Yahweh, it's just like, I don't know, it's just, just powerful. Mind. And in the New Testament, the language changed from Hebrew to Greek because Greek was like the, what would English, what English would be today. Like, English is like the, the, the language of trade, of commerce. Everyone wants to learn English so that they can make trades with the United States or the West. And so Greek was a similar type language that came into effect. And so Hebrew people learned Greek. And so they took that term Adonai, meaning Lord, and they translated it to kurios, which is in Greek, and it also means Lord. So ultimately, that ties back to the fact that when they say Jesus Christ the Lord, there's so much meaning there. Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one they're waiting for, the Lord, Yahweh, the great I am. I mean, what a powerful name that Jesus has been given. Why? Because it's all about him. It's all about him. So with that, ultimately, the question is, just as Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? The question boils down to us. Who do you say that Jesus is? And I actually ran across a meme that was on <laughs> Facebook yesterday. and. It said that each one of us is an innkeeper with the decision of, are we going to allow Jesus in? And, and that is the real question around Christmas season. God gave the gift, Jesus became a man, laid down his perfect life for us. But the question is, will we accept the gift? Will we personally trust in Jesus Christ for what he's done for us on the cross and receive his forgiveness? And, and spread that forgiveness and that love and that hope to the people around us during this Christmas season. So with that, thanks for taking a few moments and watching our weekend in review. God bless you. We have a great Christmas Eve service coming up and we really would invite you to join us for that. It's going to be here at the church at 5 p.m. And we're going to end that evening with a candlelit song, which is always our tradition and a great time. So really hope that you would consider joining us uh, 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve. And then we'll also have a service again on uh, December 26th, the day after Christmas. So God bless you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you. Have a good week.